City of Track Betting Corporation. In association with Yonkers Raceway, the home of the Triple Crown. Present Racing from Yonkers. Here with Spencer Ross and Bob Meyer to call the race action. And always a particularly thrilling moment in the harness racing season, Triple Crown action. And there has not been a Triple Crown winner on the trotting side since Super Bowl turned the trick in 1972. There will be no Cinderella story this year. The Cinderella slipper fell off somewhere in a paddock. We're talking about Berkshire Buddy, who won 17,000 last year, this year on a five-race winning streak. They sent him out for a little romp, but he turned an ankle. He's not here tonight, and it cost his owners 25000 right off the bat. He was supplemented, and uh, he is now injured. And Krista Starr came up lame and has been scratched in the race. There are still some Cinderella's in the cast, however. We'll see whether they can meet the task ahead of them in the next few moments. So we have 23 remaining going in three divisions, and the first division is tonight's first race, and here we go. We've got nine in this one. Two part of the entry of Jan Janssen of Sweden. That's 1C Sherwood Lobel with Bernd Lindstedt driving. Going for post position 3-1A. OTB letter F post position 6. Starlet with Hock and Wallner. 2A from the rail of Speedy Nautilus. Carmine Abatello 3B post 2. Keystone Voyager the legendary Del Miller. 4D from post position 4. Speedy Claude Eldon Harnett. 5E from 5. Joie de Vie. Buddy Gilmore. 6G last quick Jan Nordin. 7H is premium Lobel with Howard Beisinger and 8i going for post position nine that's along the rail in the second tier desert night with Ray Remen and here's the bullet Bob Meyer with a call they're all Sherwood Lobel to send the track tries for the lead speedy Claude in between horses second Juan de Vee towards the outside third speedy Nautilus on the rail fourth Keystone Voyager fifth desert night on the rail sixth speedy Nautilus is off stride around the turn down the back stretch Sherwood Lobel leads by half length Juan de Vee on the outside second to challenge you get the lead Straighting out down the back stretch. Juan de Vee on the outside in front. Sherwood Lobel second. Gap of three and a half lengths. Speedy Claude third. Lonely inside. Desert Knight fourth. Started alongside fifth. Quarter time is 29 and four. At the paddock turn the first time. Juan de Vee in front by a length and a half. Sherwood Lobel second. Gap of three and a half lengths. Speedy Claude third. Two lengths back to Desert Knight fourth. Started the outside fifth. Keystone Voyager on the rail sixth. Last quick, the outside seventh. Gap of four lengths, premium Lobel eight. Something about the stands first time. Joie de Vie out on top by a length. Sherwood Lobel second. Gap of two and a half lengths, Speedy Claude third. Desert Knight fourth. Four lengths back to Starlet fifth. Half time is 59 and four. Around the clubhouse turn the second time. Joie de Vie shows the way by a length. Sherwood Lobel second. Gap of two lengths, Speedy Claude third. Desert Knight fourth. Two and a half lengths back to Starlet fifth. Gap of four lengths, last quick moving on the outside six. Keystone Voyage along the rail seventh. Premium Lobel is eight. Down the back stretch. Schwan de V maintaining a length advantage. Sherwood Lobel second. Speedy caught up on the outside third. Length and a half back to Desert Knight Falls. Three quarters, one thirty and two. Around the far turn, Schwan de V still on top by a length. Sherwood Lobel on the rail second. Speedy caught alongside third. Gap of two lengths, Desert Knight Falls. Five lengths back to Scarlet on the rail fifth. They come to the top of the stretch. Schwan de Vee still in front by a length. Sherwood Lobel the outside second. Speedy Claude third. Through the stretch, Schwan de Vee in front with Sherwood Lobel coming at him. Schwan de Vee and Sherwood Lobel. Schwan de Vee, Sherwood Lobel coming on. Here's the finish. Number 1C, Sherwood Lobel. The winner by about a half length. 4D, Speedy Claude finishing second. And we'll wait on the photo for the show spot. Let's go back to the press box. So Stan Bergstein. Well, somehow, they did not believe the past performances. Sherwood LaBelle has beaten Joie de Vie in their last two meetings. The only two losses Joie de Vie had suffered this year. They still installed him as the favorite. And once again, Sherwood LaBelle beat him the same way, came from behind him and caught him at the wire. And uh, in two minutes and two-fifths of a second. And here is the action as Joie de Vie is in front for Buddy Gilmore. He was wide in the first turn, way wide, and he was rolling 29 and 4 to the quarter, 59 and 4 to the half. He passed the three quarters in 130 and two fifths, and at this point, Swedish driver Brent Lindstedt eases out with Sherwood Lobel. Radovi in front, but he is not able to hold on, as you see, as Sherwood Lobel gets up to nip him in the wire more than nip him. He was a half length in front with that two minute and two fifth mile. And uh, 
That is it in the first elimination. Well, the first elimination, Sherwood Lobel, as Stan has mentioned, this is a three-year-old who has beaten Joie David now three consecutive times. As number one, OTB letter C, Sherwood Lobel, with Bernd Linstead driving, trained by Jan Janssen, returns 10-20, 280, $2.10. With 5E, Joie de V, second, 240, and 210. Number four, OTB letter D, Speedy Claw takes third, $2.20. That's very important because the first three in each of the three divisions tonight will be back for the finals. And we'll get back with division number two. Of oh, with Sherwood Lobel, Joie de V, and Speedy Claw qualifying in the first elimination. Here is the second, and it's the second half of the daily double. 1A Berkshire Buddy and 2B Krista's Star have been scratched. 3C Killbuck Sir coupled with Sherwood Lobel. 120-40 in the double. 4D Killbuck Count Jean Nordine driving. 205-60. Incidentally, Killbuck Sir is Howard Beisinger in the bike. 5E Rickless with Bill Houghton will pay 14.60. 6F Duenna Stanley Dancer 31.80. 7G Cape Canaveral, Doug Ackerman driving, 421.60. And 8H Yankee Peak, driven uh, by um, Buddy Gilmore, will be $406. I had to check the driver, but I don't have to check the announcer. It's Bob Meyer, and here is the call. Bob? Arrow of Killbuck Count tries for the lead. Rickless in between horses second. Duenna towards the outside third. Killbuck saw along the rail fourth. Cape Canaveral fifth. Yankee Peak the outside sixth. Around the turn, moving towards the backstretch, Killbuck Sir is off stride. Killbuck counted front by a length, Rickler's second. Gap of three and a half lengths, Duenna third. About five lengths back to Cape Canaveral on the rail fourth. Yankee peak the outside fifth. Cape Canaveral goes off stride. Approaching the quarter pole, Rickless up on the outside to get the lead by a length and a half. Killbuck count back to second. Gap of two lengths, Duenna third. Quarter time is 30 and two. At the paddock turn the first time, Rickless in front by a length and a half. Killbuck count second. Gap of two lengths, Duenna third. Four lengths back to Yankee Peak fourth, Cape Canaveral fifth, and a length and a half back to Killbuck Sir, trotting and treading the field sixth. As they come by the stands the first time, Rickless sat on top by a length and a quarter, Killbuck count second, Duenna third. Gap of two lengths, Yankee Peak fourth, Cape Canaveral fifth, Killbuck Sir goes off stride again. Halftime is 102 and three. Around the clubhouse turn the second time. Rickless maintaining a length advantage. Killbuck count second. Duenna third. Yankee peak fourth. Cape Canaveral fifth. Far back to Killbuck Sir trailing the field sixth. Around the turn down the back stretch. Rickless still has the best of it by length. Killbuck count on the rail second. Duenna begins to move on the outside third. Gap of two lengths. Yankee peak fourth. Two lengths back to Cape Canaveral fifth. Approaching the three-quarter pole. Rickless in front by length. Duenna up on the rim second. Killbuck count along the rail third. Three quarters, one, 33 and four. Around the far turn, Rickless in front by three points of a length. Duenna alongside second to challenge. Killbuck count on the rail third. Gap two lengths, Yankee peak four. Two and a half lengths back to Cape Canaveral fifth. They come to the top of the stretch. Rickless on the inside still leads by three points of a length. Duenna the outside second. Killbuck count on the rail third. Through the stretch, Rickless in front by a length. Duenna the outside second with Killbuck count third. Rickless and Duenna. Rickless in front. Here's a finish, 5E Rickless, a winner by about three parts of a length. 6F, Duenna finishing second, and 4D, Kill Buck Count was third. Let's go back to the press box and Spencer Ross. A tiny Colt Rickless did win $122,000 last year, owned by the same gentleman who owned Green Speed, Billy Houghton's last Yonkers Trot winner. Well, after winning a couple of races against older horses here, Billy Houghton made a phone call to Florida to Mr. Lloyds, and Lloyd Lloyds put up the $25,000 to supplement this three-year-old. And the money well invested because the share in winning tonight's second division worth more than $45,000. It was all Rickless all the way, and he did it with very easy fractions. They come to the three quarters right here. Rickless in 133 and four with Duena, Stanley Dancer's horse. Not his best horse. Dancer's crown, not ready yet, and Stanley Dancer did not have him entered this evening. But coming into the stretch, Billy Houghton opens it up just a little bit with a final quarter and 29 seconds. Duena closing on the outside, 2.02 and 4. Not that quick a mile. A reminder of the New York Cosmos can be seen in its entirety following racing from Yonkers at 11.30 this evening. <laughs> 
could make him a favorite for tonight's finals. We'll see. The results of the second race are official with 5E e Rickless, owned by L.S. Lloyds of Palm Beach, Florida, trained by Apple Thomas, Billy Houghton in the bike, returns 260, 210, and 220. 6F, Duena was second, 210 and 220, and 4D, Killbuck Count finished third, and even $3. The Quinella of 5 and 6, or 6 and 5, E and F for F and E, returns $3.20, and tonight's early daily double here at Yonkers Raceway, a combination of 1C, Sherwood Lobel, and 5E Rickless returns $14.60. More of the Yonkers Strut. Tonight's third elimination to decide the next three finalists when we return. Here's our third division of the Yonkers Trot. Three more will qualify for the finals. Number one OTB letter A, Coleman Lobel, Tommy Houghton, the driver. 2B is Attila with Jan Nordin. 3C, Jersey Cup, Ed Morris, the driver. 4D is Allwood's feature with Bernd Lindstedt in the bike. Number five, OTB letter E, Brookside Pride. Frank Popfinger's the driver. 6F, the favorite, Mr. Drew with Glenn Garnsey. Number seven, OTB letter G, Florida Sun, Howard Beisinger, the driver. And number eight, OTB letter H is play action with Carl Allen. Eight of the finest three-year-old trotters in the nation. Come to the wire for the Yonkers Trot and here's Bob. They're on Jersey Cup in between horses tries for the lead as Attila goes off stride. Coleman Lobel on the rail second. Brookside Fry on the outside third. Play action far outside fourth. Mr. Drew fifth. Allwood's feature on the rail sixth. Florida Sun the outside seventh. Around the turn down the back stretch. Brookside Fry in front by three points of a length. Play action looking to drop in second. Coleman Lobel third. Gap of a length and a half, Jersey Cup fourth. Florida Sun moving on the outside fifth. Mr. Drew on the rail sixth. All with feature seventh. And fall back to Attila trailing the field eight. Quarter time is 30 seconds flat. Paddock turned the first time. Brookside Pride in front by a length. Coleman Lobel up on the outside second to challenge. Play action along the rail third. Gap of a length and a half, Florida Sun fourth. Three lengths back to Jersey Cup fifth. Mr. Drew sixth. All with feature seventh. As they come by the stands the first time, Coleman Lobel is off stride. Brookside Pride out on top by a length. Play action second. Gap two lengths, Florida Sun third. Two more lengths back to Coleman Lobel fourth. Halftime is 59 and four. Around the clubhouse turn a second time. Brookside Pride maintains a length advantage. Play action second. Florida Sun swings the outside third. Mr. Drew the far outside fourth. Coleman Lobel on the rail fifth. Down the back stretch. Florida Sun on the outside gets a neck in front. Brookside Pride hanging tough on the rail second. Mr. Drew on the rim third. Play action on the inside fourth. Gap of three lengths. Jersey Cup the outside fifth. Coleman Obel on the rail sixth. Approaching the three-quarter pole. It's Brookside Pride on the inside. Florida Sun on the outside. Head and head for the lead. Three quarters. One, thirty, and four. Around the far turn. Brookside Pride on the inside. Florida Sun on the outside. Still matching strides for the lead. Play action. That's the racing one on the inside third. Mr. Drew the outside fourth. Coleman Lobel on the rail fifth. They come to the top of the stretch. Brookside Pride on the inside. Hands the lead by half length. Florida Sun on the outside second. Play action third. It's Brookside Pride with Florida Sun in play action. Brookside Pride in front. Here's the finish. 5E Brookside Pride. The winner by about a length. 7G Florida Sun finishing second. And 8H play action is third. Now let's go back to the press boxes. Stan Burkstein. Well, if there are any surprises, there it is. Brookside Pride, who had won only one race and six starts this year, winning his elimination of the Yonkers Trot in front racing fashion for Frank Poppinger. Florida Sun took a run at him, or a trot at him, if you would prefer, on the backstretch, but could not get by him. He got to him, but he could not get by him. And Mr. Drew, who was the favorite in the race, not only couldn't get by him, but couldn't even get to him. On the outside, Florida Sun still trying, but down along the inside, Brookside Pride, who is a three-year-old colt by Star Shot, who was owned by the man who owns Brookside Pride, John Walker, and Mr. Walker trains him. Trots confidently home for Frank Popfinger. In second is Florida Sun, and play action finishes third for Carl Allen to qualify also for the final. And 5E Brookside Pride pays 1680, 660, and 520. 7G Florida Sun, 1420, $9, and 8H play action, $11 to show. With a triple of 5, 7, and 8, E, G, and H returning $5,494.50 to 23 of the best three year old trotters in America for $486,000. And in addition to Fortune Teller, the richest horse in any kind of racing last year with 1.4 million as a two-year-old on tonight's card, 
the horse of the year last year, Cam Fella, Harness Horse of the Year is here. He races in the fourth race, and we pick up the action going down the back stretch to the quarter mile mark as Cam Fella has to overcome a big deficit because Miller's Scout went streaking out for Buddy Gilmore. And now Cam Fella rushes up and with a quarter in 28 and 3 goes to the front, leaving Miller's Scout in second and the rest of the field trailing them. Pat Crow kept moving with Cam Fella, but not without challenge. He got down to the half mile mark in a swift 59 and 2 fifth seconds, comfortable for Cam Fella. And then the challenges started to mount as they went down the back stretch. The main challenge that was mounted was by Perfect Out. And we will see what happens as they get to the three quarters when Perfect Out ranges up on the outside and challenges for the lead. Here they are coming around the stretch turn. And as you can see, Perfect Out has given it all he has and Cam Fella still in front. Now, Buddy Gilmore whips out again with Miller's Scout, who had gotten the lead early and comes on. Pat Crow looks up, just jerks the line, and Cam Fella with a last quarter in 28 and 3, a last half in 58 and 1, wins here in 157 and 1 fifth, easing home another victor, as he usually is. Harness Horses, Horse of the Year last year, sick early this year, but back in perfect peak form again this year. And somebody will have to overtake him if they hope to be Horse of the Year this year other than him. Right now, however, we're ready for the final of the Yonkers Trot coming up right after. We're ready for the $195,000 final of the Yonkers Trot, the richest Triple Crown race of the day. The three winners of the eliminations drew for one, two, three. It was Rickless, Sherwood, Lobel, and Brookside Pride growing in that order. The three horses that finished second in the eliminations then drew for four, five, and six. And as you see, it was Joie de Vie, Duena, and Florida Sun. And finally, the three horses that finished third in the eliminations drew for seven, eight, and nine, Kill Buck Count, Play Action, and Speedy Claude. And that means that Speedy Claude will start in the second tier down along the rail behind Rickless. Right now, Bob Meyer is behind the microphone, and here is his call. Nero Sherwood Lobel tries for the late Brookside Pride towards the outside second. Rickless along the rail third. Joie to be the outside fourth. Speedy Claude on the rail fifth. Duenna in between horses sixth. Florida on the outside seventh. Killbuck County play action is ninth. Around the turn, down the back stretch. Sherwood Lobel on the inside. Brookside Pride on the outside. Battling for the leader. Sherwood Lobel was on stride. Brookside Pride has the lead. Juan de B rushing up on the outside to challenge Rickless third. Approaching the quarter pole, Juan de B on the outside gets the lead. Brookside Pride back to second. Quarter time is 29 and 4. Paddock turn the first time. Juan de B in front by two lengths. Brookside Pride second. Gap of two lengths. Rickless third. Florida Sun moving on the outside fourth. Speedy Claude along the rail fifth. Sherwood Low Bell sixth. As they come by the stands the first time, Juan de B has the lead by a length. Florida Sun on the outside, second to challenge. Brookside Pride along the rail third. Brookside Pride is off stride. Coming the half mile pole, Juan de B in front by a length. Florida Sun dropping in second. At the three lengths, Rickless third. Half time is 59 and two. Around the clubhouse turn the second time, Juan de B shows the way by a length. Florida Sun second. Half of a length and a half, Rickless third. Two lengths back to Speedy Claude fourth. Sherwood Lobel up on the outside fifth. Killbuck count on the round six. Play action alongside seven. He went out his eight. And on the back stretch, Joe Joie de B maintains the length advantage. Florida Sun second. Rick Fells rushing up on the outside third. Sherwood Lobel goes right with him fourth. Speedy caught on the rail fifth. Three quarters, one thirty and three. Around the far turn, Joie de B in front by length. Rick goes to the outside second. Florida Sun on the rail third. Florida Sun goes off stride. They come to the top of the stretch. Juan B in front now by two lengths. Rickless second, Sherwood Lobel third. Coming through the stretch, Juan B is opening up to a two and a half, three length advantage. Rickless second, Sherwood Lobel third. Juan B in front by two and a half with Rickless and Sherwood Lobel. Juan B in front. Here's the finish for Juan B, the winner by about two lengths. Number one, Rickless finishing second, and number two, Sherwood Lobel was third. Now let's go back to the press box and Stan Bergstein. The California Flash, Juan de V wins it and pays $9.80, $4.320 as number four. Uh, number one, Rickless was second, $2.80, $2.40. And number two, Sherwood Lobel saved the show, $3.40. Two show with the exacta of four and one, paying $29. Gentlemen, Buddy Gilmore is one of the owners of Juan de V. Said to him tonight, 
I've been looking to meet you for 25 years. Nice to meet you down in the winner's circle. The question, buddy, how did you wind up with the joy of life and the joy of winning the Yonkers Trot? Tell us. That part of being in this business is just total lucky. Tuesday night, uh, uh, the Ned Bauer is the trainer of the horse. He come to me uh, about 7 o'clock. He said, will you race that horse for me Saturday night? And I knew what horse he was training. I said, I sure will. I'd be happy to drive him. And uh, that's how it just happened to be in the right place at the right time. And I guess the owner or somebody or Ned, I've known Ned a long time, and I'm sure. That... Okay, let's go back to the first division. That one, he was he was racing and racing very, very tough and didn't have enough left. And Sherwood Lobel, who'd beaten him twice already this year, came on and overtook him to the stretch. That had to give you a lot of concern. It, it gave me a lot of concern because uh, I know if he's in my back again, that i got to get this horse to relax to, so he can trot a little farther. The first trip, uh, he just wouldn't relax. He, he's, he's trying to trot faster than what he had to go, and you keep taking back on him, and you're going to choke him off. I okay, so 59 and 2 to the half in this one and at that point I was looking and saying maybe Buddy Gilmore's in a little bit of trouble. Flower to Sun with Howard Bisinger sitting second and moving on the outside Billy Houghton begins to make a move with you right now with Rickless and Sherwood Lobel had broken but you knew Sherwood Lobel was still there right? I know because he got back trot just to, I just caught a glimpse of him get back on the trot and I knew about where he was in the race after he made the break when I went on to the front and then when Billy came, uh, I let him trot on a little bit. Then when I got around the upper turn, I, I thought that I had a pretty good shot to get from there home. Pretty good shot. You had to be pretty confident right here, Buddy Gilmore. Yeah, yeah he felt pretty good right about there. Buddy Gilmore, you've had a lot of great moments in racing. Is this perhaps your biggest, and we're going to get run over by a horse, and that would top the evening up? Is this your biggest? Not getting almost run over by a horse, but winning the Yonkers truck. This is, this is the biggest race I ever win, and it's, it's a lot of satisfaction winning a race like this because, uh, you know, all your life you dream about winning these kind, and it's a, it's a great thrill. It really is. The man with the golden hands, Buddy Gilmore, and the joy of life, Joie de Vie, winning the Yonkers truck. Congratulations, buddy. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Frank. Okay, let's get back upstairs to Stan Bergstein. Our congratulations to Buddy Gilmore, to owner Maury Siegel, and to the veteran trotting trainer Ned Bauer, who did a great job bringing this horse to the Yonkers Trot victory. And uh, get well, Mike Cipriani, great ace photographers in the Hospital of St. John. Stan Bergstein, for Spencer Ross and Bob Meyer, we'll see you next Thursday night at 11.